So right here I have six representations of buffer systems on AR-15s. I'm gonna go over all of them and talk about the various components and what makes them different and give some recommendations. First and foremost, this is an A2 tube. This is a full-length rifle tube. The buffer itself is longer. It's the longest one here. It has five weights in it with rubber stoppers in between, and then it has an aluminum piece back here to space it out. This one here in particular, I have a, a Tubbs flat wire spring that's been cut off a little bit. Uh, it seems to run pretty good in this one, so I just stick with it. With a longer gun like this, 24 inch barrel with a rifle length, this is a really good system, especially if you're doing longer distance stuff. It's, it's not a bad choice to go. You can use shorter ones, but I really prefer the longer rifle system. The next longest is the A5 system. It's made by Ultor. It has a medium length buffer. It has four weights in it with four pieces of rubber in between. And then it has a little spring back here that holds it all together. Okay, you can hear I mark it with H2 because I, I play around with the different weights in here. And so if I don't mark it, I forget. This one, I'm using a Sprinco Green Spring. It's a pretty standard setup. This tube is about an inch longer than your normal M4 carving tube. This is, this is your M4 carving tube right here. This one's mil spec. This is a six position. When they originally came out, they're a four position. So the buffer itself, this is an H buffer. It's an inch shorter than the A5, okay? This one I have a Tubbs flat wire spring in. I use a lot of Tubbs flat wire springs. They run exceptionally well. They're really easy for maintenance. So this one's different. This one right here is the same size essentially as the mil spec tube, but this one's actually a, uh, a commercial tube. It's a little bit larger in diameter and it's not made as well. It's one of two that we have in the shop. It's on the junk gun. And quite frankly, these are junk and therefore that's why it's on the junk gun. I have a Strike Eagle flat wire spring, which is a piece of crap in it. It wasn't running in another gun. I got it to work in this one. And then this one's just a basic carving buffer. Of all the things in this piece of garbage right here that stopped it from running, it is the spring and the buffer. And if the buffer and the spring are not correct, you're not using decent enough parts, it will crap the bed on you every time. They are that critical for the cycling of an AR. So choose wisely. This is not wise choice. This is stuff that we do to, to make our make ourselves better at working the mechanics and getting guns to run. So this is an LWRC Ultra Compact. It's an inch shorter than the standard M4 right here. It's an inch shorter in this area right here. You can see it right here, okay? This is also an inch shorter. This is, they call it a UC2. This uses a Tubbs abbreviated spring, which is made for 300 blackouts or ARs 14 and a half inch and longer. It works. This is an SBR. It's a 300 blackout 8 inch and it runs great. It's a nice small stock, but I absolutely don't recommend that unless you know what you're getting into and know how to time a system right, know how to get everything to run correctly. They can be finicky. So this is not a starting off point. This right here is a Troy, I think they call it a Magnus. It's a PDW stock with an abbreviated tube like on uh, the LWRC Ultra Compact. But this one uses a different spring and a different buffer. And this buffer, sorry, this buffer is, is clearly different. It uses different weights and it has a secondary spring in it. And, well, the reason we have it in, this is Jump Gun 2. The reason we have it is because this gun, or this stock, we, we couldn't get it to run on anything short. So any of the shorty pistols or SBRs, forget about it. This system just doesn't have the juice to do it. This is a 16 inch mid-length gun and it runs just fine on it, kind of. It's still kind of squirrely, so not really what we would recommend, definitely. So here's what we typically see. We see people do this because they think it's cool or do this because they think it's cheap, right? And as soon as they do that, the gun doesn't run because something's not functioning properly. This one typically comes with a really, really bad piece of shit buffer. And we end up fixing it and making it one of these, okay? So keep that in mind. When you're looking at these tubes, that is a gigantic indicator when it has a commercial tube on there and it's cut at an angle. 
bad juju. It's an indicator that you're going to buy a cheap gun and it's probably not going to work very well. We'll talk about some more components on that here in a minute. So this is what buffers look like when they're taken apart. This is an A tube, A2, sorry. It is 7075 T6 aluminum. It's all one piece. And then it's tie nitride coated. Okay. These are the weights and the, the actual pieces of rubber in between. You can see there. And then it's got this spacer in the back. It's just a piece of aluminum. It's capped off with a piece of rubber. This is what we typically see for good rubber on the back of these. You can see it's kind of yellow, but it's clear. And then you have a roll pin holding it all together. These are all steel weights. This is your standard carbine, same thing, 7075 T6, titanium nit uh, the titanium coating. I said tight nitride, didn't I? It's titanium coating. Um, steel weights, rubber. This one right here, you can see it's a different color. This one's a titanium, sorry, a tungsten weight. Tungsten weights are heavier, and you do that to add weight to the system to speed it up or slow it down. This is an H buffer. So H1 has one tungsten weight, an H2 has two, and H3 has three. So here's what we typically see on some of the bad buffers. And these are the ones that we typically don't recommend. I'm trying to get my legs out of the way there. Okay. Um, so let's start off right here. These are all Chinesium. You can see that the head is screwed on here, okay? like that you can also see that the aluminum is just pounded to shit and it's got this weird white plastic thing it's not yellow like that one okay so the coating's different the aluminum's different it feels different and they just fall apart this one's been pounded to shit this one's been pounded to shit you can see that the plastic isn't even strong enough to take the pounding i mean these things just fall apart these are out of our bucket of shame we find these in cheap guns all the time the other ones are black, black coatings with white piece on the back here, piece of white rubber has a tendency to be Chinesium. They are Chinesium, especially if they come with a black spring garbage. Um, so this one, this is an indicator that it was running really fast. And this one's probably softer aluminum. I think this one's actually Chinese too, if I look at it. Um, you can hear that the, the weights are working correctly in this one, but you can see it's just it just got pounded to shit. There should not be that much wear on normal 7075 T6 aluminum. So this one sounds normal. This one does not sound normal. Hear that? That's because a lot of these, they'll put oil on the steel in here because they use shitty steel weights. You can see this one's got weird yellow plastic on the end. Chinesium and it sticks the rubber to the steel weights it turns it all into a single piece of weight your dead blow dies and then your gun doesn't want to run properly so garbage solid there is no weight at all these are fine for pcc's for ar-10s ar-15s nope the other thing that we see are insides that have this a single weight or two weights these will not run. Your dead blow is gone. You have to have a dead blow effect in that system or it's just not going to run. Okay. Uh, so let's go on to carbine weights. So carbine weights, these are your res respective carbines, uh, buffers. This is a standard carbine. Sorry. Standard carbine. There's no marking whatsoever on the end. Then there's an H. That's an H. There's one tungsten weight. H2, two tungsten weights. H3, three tungsten weights. These are your respective weights underneath that. Um, I am in Colorado, therefore, everyone has a scale in Colorado. That's just how it works, right? So, the heavier the weight, the more work it takes for the bolt carrier group to move back and unlock your bolt because it's pressing against it. So the workload slows the system down a little bit more, microseconds of time. That microseconds of time allows the bullet to leave the barrel, allows pressure to ease more in your chamber, and it allows the system to cycle at a slower, softer impulse. And so that's really kind of how you slow your system down is by adding weights and going up. So real quick, let's talk about 
AR-15s versus AR-10s or 308s versus 5.56s. So the 308 actually uses a shorter buffer and a shorter carbine buffer than um, the, the AR-15. And the reason being is that the bolt is longer, so it needs more space to fit properly into the tube and cycle or it's going to short stroke. If you flip them backwards, it'll actually cause the AR-15 to recess too far into the tube and hit the end of it and it causes damage. So you have to make sure that you're using the right buffer system. Here's where it gets weird. Hold on, let me grab a different tube. So this is your standard A4 tube right here. Sorry, I say A4 tube, I, I mean the M4 carbine. I just keep saying A4 because it, anyway. Um, this is an A5 tube by BCM. And the A5 tube allows you, because it's an inch longer, right, to use this buffer with the A5 tube on an AR10 or 308, 65 Creedmoor, et cetera, size, okay? So it gives you the ability to use all of those variable weighted buffers and change your locking system, add weight to it, subtract weight to it, it gives you more flexibility. When we build 308s, we just put an A5 tube right on them. It's the best of all three of these sizes to use in that scenario. So when you're building, keep that in mind, put an A5 tube on it, just don't even worry about it. It's just it's 10 times easier to deal with it that way, okay? So now when it comes to carbine tubes, carbine tubes um, can be problematic at times because there are a whole bunch of different types. These are all basically M4 carbine length type tubes, right? This is your standard mil spec tube. It's 1.15, has six ports on it, right? Let me get out of the light here. Has six ports on it. Okay, you can see the ports. It has nice sharp edges here. Um, and it's flat, It's sorry, it's cut flat on the back here, right here, okay, see that? So, this is the only other car commercial buffer tube in our shop. And if you look at the back here, it's not cut straight. Let me see if I can get a better shot of it. There you go, like that. See how it's angled? It's not cut straight. It has round recesses right here. It has a little bit different front here. The way that they cut the threads into the tube is different. These use different aluminum. These use a different manufacturing process. They're not as strong. We see these break, okay? You gotta work at breaking one of these. You gotta earn that shit, okay? This thing, not so much. This thing, you, uh, you mortar it wrong and you're done. It's gonna crack, thanks, have a nice day. Your gun's not functional anymore. We don't sell these, we don't put these on guns. We don't even carry stocks for these anymore. We will sell you one of these and we'll change it out for you before we actually order you a stock for this. It's just not worth it. Buffer tube for a pistol, old one, it's an old beater. This is a new one, okay, just to kind of show you the difference, right? But this is what we're starting to see from some companies. This right here is an Aero Precision Enhanced Buffer Tube. It has little feet right here, toes that are going over the buffer retainer and holding it in place better has very, very good made threads. These threads are super tight in every one of the freaking loaders we've tested so far. Has a little bit of recess, it makes it easier to put everything together. The holes have holes all the way through so that you can stop vapor locking. You can allow water to run out if you get water in it. Has a little bit of chamfer in the back. And these are mil spec 7075 T6 aluminum anodized. They're nice and smooth on the inside. These are actually $10 more than the regular ones, so they're 40 bucks instead of like 30 bucks. We just put them on pretty much everything we own anymore. They, they work extremely well. So stay within this area right here, okay? Long rifles, carbines, okay? Something in between, these are more expensive if you wanna go that route. Some people love these. I'm okay with it. I don't think that it's magic. Some people love them. Um, just kind of personal preference between the two. This is a huge indicator you're getting a bad gun. Don't do it. And this, don't do this unless you know what you're getting into, okay? Especially this. 